This is our second episode. Um, today we will be speaking about the water element and its associated taste, the uh, salty taste. Um, salt is a vital mineral to life and it speaks to the water's elements association um, with our reserves, our essence. Um, the kidney organ is related to the water element and it is considered the root of all things yin and yang in our body. So it talks about our metabolism, our endocrine system. And when we talk about salt, we're talking about um, a element that is um, like water. Um, it brings out the hidden deep flavors and aromas of things. It enhances and balances other flavors and enriches it. So it becomes um, the taste that marries all the other tastes together. So we're going to introduce everyone. I'm Leah Kim, acupuncturist and herbalist. Um, we also again have Ashley Hartz, a holistic nutritional <laughs> coach and educator. Hi, Leah. So glad to be here. And today we have uh, Patricia Bove, uh, who is a graphic designer and our guest. Hello, everyone. And of course, we have Chef Phil. Good morning. And good morning. So what are we making today? Uh, because of the element of water and actually the salt taste, what we chose to is to use salt to cure salmon, which is a traditional um, Nordic dish called Bravlax. And that's what we're going to make today. We're going to show you how we um, cure the salmon. And um, I actually put a little bit more of a modern twist on it um, than they did back in the day and show you that and show you how and tell you why the salt uh, interacts with the salmon and the oils of the salmon and what actually happens. And I'll do that as I go through the process. It's a really simple menu. Um, it's actually a menu that would take you all of five minutes to prepare, but unfortunately you won't be able to enjoy it for at least 48 hours. Okay. Sounds exciting. We've got salt and fish, two elements of the water element. Absolutely. So whenever you're ready, I'll get started. So, um, first of all, we always want to buy local. So just to let you know, um, I went and purchased some line caught salmon, which is wild salmon. Uh, salmon today is uh, produced uh, in many different ways. Uh, well, two mostly, farmed, and there's wild caught. Whenever there's wild caught on the market, I prefer that. Um, we want to uh, always find something that's sustainable and um, fresh. So I have a piece of um, salmon here. This is wild line caught salmon. It's about a pound and a half. And um, we want to make sure that we keep the salmon nice and dry because it will leach some water from it when you, when, when you have it covered. And um, we pull all the pin bones out. And now you can do it either they have a special tool that you um, can pull the pin bones out or you can actually use a little needle nose plier and they'll come out nice and easy. Once the fillet is fished, those bones have disconnected from the main vertebrae that runs down the center of the salmon and the bones will be very easily plucked out. And in order to do that, you just run your hands through. I've already cleaned this. You just run your hands through and if you feel little pinchy bones in it, you'll take a look and you'll see a little white um, color between the pink flesh and you'll be able to pull that bone out very easily. So to, sh to show you what we do is um, with, with the salmon, um, I'm just gonna lay it on a cutting board, for, I mean a, a tray for a second. Um, and we're gonna leave it to the side. Um, we take a mixture of salt and sugar. I use kosher salt or coarse salt, and I happen to use turbinado sugar. It's a brown natural sugar. It's not processed. So I rather use something that's not processed. Um, it just, it's more natural. The flavors are better. Um, and I do a 50-50 mix. Depending on what you want, you can do, a, uh, you can alter your ratio of salt to uh, sugar, but the salt is what's really going to cure the salmon. It's going to pull the oils out of the salmon. Okay, uh, the salmon will become a little drier and um, it actually, it's a method of cooking. Uh, just like if you were making a ceviche or if you were curing a prosciutto de palma, um, 
salt is used for that. So Phil, what, is, what does it really mean when you say you're curing something? What is, what's the sort of science behind it? Well, the, the science behind it is you're actually cooking, okay, using natural products, which is, which is salt. Um, years ago, they used to use pink salt as well for preserving meats, uh, for making salamis, making um, any type of charcuterie. Uh, and what they do, um, they take that, uh, the pink salt actually, or, or the, uh, the salt that I just mentioned, actually kept the color of the meat as well. Because normally if you just put a, a, a regular style kosher salt on meat, what happens is the meat starts to turn, uh, it starts to oxidize and turn a little brown. Where um, that, the salt peter that I mentioned is a curing salt. Um, it's also known as pink salt. Uh, actually helps keep the color. And you have to be really careful when you utilize that as well because it's not as healthy as you think it is. It's, it's, it's part of nitrates actually. Um, so the, what, what happens is when the salt starts to, um, you, you can only do this with what they call fatty fish or oily fish, and salmon's in that category. It has the only omega-3 oils, um, and it, when you taste salmon compared to sole, or even when you cook it, you'll see the oils actually come out in extract. Um, so it's a little bit more forgiving when you're cooking a piece of salmon, other than when you're cooking a flat fish or a white fish, white flesh fish, that doesn't have the oils that salmon has. It'll be more drier and flakier and fall apart, where salmon will give you a little bit more forgiveness. So what we do is we mix our, our salt and our sugar together in a, in a little bowl. And then what I do is I take some dill and I, I chop some dill really, really fine. And you wanna make sure your dill is washed, okay? And then dry it with a paper towel before you chop it. Um, because you don't want to put wet dill on. Uh, what will happen when the dill is wet also, it starts to deteriorate and goes bad. You don't want the water content in it. Whatever water you can keep out of it, the better it is. Um, Ashley, can you speak to us a little bit about sort of the nutritional values um, with the ingredients that Phil is using? Yes, yeah, so as Phil mentioned, um, the dill and um, the herbs are always a great way to kind of freshen up um, and bring in some minerals from the earth and some vitamins. But the salmon itself is one of the most amazing um, fish that you can have. It's rated as one of the highest um, nutritionally dense fish. As you mentioned, the oily fishes are high in omega-3s, which is a fatty acid and what we call good fat. So that good fat is supportive to brain health. It's great for heart health. So as we might be afraid of cholesterol and fat, this good fat, this omega-3s are known to help with um, keeping our hearts healthy, reducing cholesterol and actually have a positive effect on our health. So that's always a great way. And then salt itself has some great nutritional benefits. Um, in that it helps with um, balancing our um, liquid and our fluid balance in the body. It's an electrolyte. So salt is something that's essential for health. We have to have the right amount of salt to balance out the fluids in our body. So moving, moving forward, I'm sorry, go ahead Patricia. No, I, had a, I had a question speaking of just nutritional value. Um, so you were talking about farm raised versus line caught. So, is there any merit to buying organic farm-raised salmon? Well, you know, when, when you say farm-raised, okay, there, there's these big areas in the ocean that pretty much are netted off. Um, and so they have them a little confined. So in other words, they're, they're not going anywhere far. Um, and they do feed them good product, okay? Some of them are fed on, on crustacean. Depending on the color of your salmon, you'll see what, what, they, what they eat. Um, and it's not, uh, it's not, um, I guess, unhealthy where you've heard stories about tilapias being, uh, being farm raised in these barrels and being fed cat food and, and all kinds of craziness. Um, they're, they're really um, watched over by the, um, the authorities that watch and claim that things are sustainable. But whenever you can, get something that's line caught and that's wild. I mean, that's what a fisherman did his whole life. He didn't go out and, you know, have little nets somewhere where he had fish in it and pulled them out uh, and served them to the public or sold them to his uh, clients. It, it, this is just like going hunting and, and um, getting the freshest product that you can get. So yeah, because of the industry and um, the amount of supply and demand uh, out there, that's why all these uh, fisheries were established so that they can raise fish um, 
same the way the farmers decided to raise corn. Uh, but whenever you can go out into your own backyard and pick your lettuce or your tomatoes, or, or you can go out and you can actually go on a boat and do fishing. That's why um, day boat fishing was so popular when they started to mass produce all of the, the other fish like the salmon and uh, shrimp. Um, can, we also, can you also tell us a little bit about the difference of color? Because that's one of the things I always notice is the color of like freshly caught salmon or, or line, uh, line raised salmon versus salmon that has been farmed, which tends to be a little pinker in color. Whereas oh. this salmon is super orange, like the beta carotene in that salmon must be incredible. And it also changes the taste I, I notice. Uh, salmon with that color tends to be much more savory, well, rich. much richer, oilier, yeah. right? Also, the, the texture is different. I noticed that the wild line caught is much firmer and um, denser as opposed to the farm raised, which has got, a, and I don't know if it's because it's been frozen and defrosted, but it's got a very soft kind of tofu, tofu kind of feel to it while the the line cod is much denser, less water in it. It's more natural. You know, it's in its own environment, swimming around, getting exercise, eating what it feels it should eat. Um, where, you know, you're being fed by pretty much humans when you're in, 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 uh, in the environment, making sure that you get fed. Um, and you're also in a confined environment, you know, more of a confined environment. You know, you're not swimming upstream and then coming downstream where where it is so it, it's 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 a different environment it's just like us i mean hell you know i mean right now look at us all we're all captive so i mean it's almost like that's what's happening in you know in the world with with, with salmon fisheries but whenever you can go out and be in your own natural environment and enjoy life why wouldn't they feel the same way you know um but yeah it, and, and different types of salmon will give you different colors too because where they're coming from uh, the, the parts of the ocean and, and what they're feeding on. Um, some will be larger, some will be smaller. The actual finished product you're going to see as I did with the king salmon. When I went back to the market, the king salmon was not uh, available and I bought wild um, Atlantic salmon, which was, uh, was a little bit on the smaller side, almost looked like a like similar to a coho salmon. Why is king salmon so tasty? I love king salmon. <laughs> I do too. It's probably, uh, you know, the name is, is in the title, king salmon. It's the royalty. It's the top of the top. Um, it's probably the best salmon on the market that you can buy. Um, but again, it's, all, it's also, you know, because of the size, um, it has a lot of really good oils. It's fattier. Uh, and um, it's, you know, it's, it's just a, a, a different extension of the species of salmon it's, it's it's and the grav locks can we use it on other um oily fishes like mackerel which is my yeah, favorite absolutely any oil fish oily fish or fatty fish that has a lot of fat content and a lot of oils you can cure it the same way um uh, and not for anything not to eat it like grav locks but even cod is salt cured because that's what bacala is it's dried, okay, it's salt cured, and then you rehydrate it when you use it. But if you wanted to eat very similar to gravelox, yes, you can use a fish like mackerel. Even bluefish you can do with something mm. like because it has that, that oil uh, content in it. Because uh, someone on this panel is not a huge fan of salmon. Uh, that would be me also, yes. Is anyone else out there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love having an alternative, right? Yeah, I would probably rather have mackerel than than, than salmon. Um, but gravelox, I can I can I can indulge in a little bit of gravelox if I serve. Um, my wife is a big salmon fan, and I tease her all the time because you want to cook salmon, but you know I'm, I don't want to be around. But uh, but I, I I get stuck cooking it for her sometimes. But this this is a little bit more to to me. It's a little bit more palatable. Um, but again, if fresh salmon if salmon is caught fresh and comes to your kitchen fresh, it tastes so much better than, than the farm raised. And the farm raised is fresh when it comes to you, but it's not the same. I don't believe it's the same. So the mixture in your hand, uh, that is sugar, salt, sugar, salt dill. dill. And I, I toasted some coriander seed and then I crushed them with my knife. Because when you toast, again, you're toasting the, the herb, the dry herb, the, the seed, you're bringing the oils out 
uh, and the flavors out of the actual um, herb. So right, coriander is also an aromatic, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm. So what you do is you put this on top and pat it down. You coat it really, really nice. Okay. Um, and I, I have about an ounce and a half of salt and an ounce and a half of uh, sugar in here, coriander and dill. And then what I do is I take the rest of this dill and just throw it on top. That's going to give it a nice little coating. Wow, look at that color. Now, years ago, what they've done, and they still do it today, they take, they take this particular salmon now and they'll wrap it in cheesecloth. And they'll turn it all upside down with the belly down and they'll put it in a platter or a, a aluminum uh, hotel pan. Uh, not aluminum, sorry, stainless steel hotel pan. You never want to use aluminum when you're keto. Um, and uh, they press it down. And normally it'll be a 24 hour cure. I like to cure mine 48 hours because I find the longer you cure it, it comes out to be a little bit like candy because the sugar starts to, to really work with, that, with the salmon. Um, so what I do instead of doing that, I kind of use a little more modern method. I put in a sous vide bag or a cryovac bag and I lift this up and I put it in the bag. And then what I'll do is I'll take whatever was left over on my little piece of plastic here and put it back on top. to make sure it's nice and coated. And this, this is how you keep your cutting board clean. And then what I do is I take this and you'll hear a little noise, but this is my little sous vide machine, little, what they call those seal and mail type of things you can buy at Williams Sonoma. And I suck all the air. What is taking all the air out of it going to do? Is it going to force the flavors into the fish? Pretty much, it's going to, the marination is going to be a lot more intense. And oh. the process is going to be faster. So pretty and, much you get a nice little package like this. And what about for us who don't have a nifty machine like that? Are we just like you're really gonna wrapping it tight in, in plastic and, wrap? Okay, you're gonna lay out plastic wrap. You turn it and you, you, you wrap it with plastic, turn it upside down, okay? Make sure it's nice and tight and then you put it in a pan. And what'll happen is some of the juices will leak out, but I don't have a mess in my refrigerator with this. I put this, I put this on a, uh, in a little uh, pan and then I'll grab out of my refrigerator a nice heavy weight, put it on top and that'll go in my refrigerator for 48 hours. After 48 hours, you pull it out and you rinse it off. And then you pat it, you pat it dry. And then I let it sit for a couple of hours in my refrigerator to air dry. And then... Air dried with the plastic still on it or air dried? Air dried with the, pl with the, plastic, with the plastic off. And then what you want to do with gravel ox, notice the skin is on still. Um, you can see, you can see the cure. Wow. The yeah, it really does look okay. candied. There's a, so, a listen to it. And if you left it in longer, or if you just changed the salt and sugar content a little bit, a little higher on the sugar than salt, maybe do like 60, 40, it'll still cure. You leave it in an extra few hours, could be a third day if you want to do, do three day cure. Um, and then you want a nice thin knife and you want to slice this nice and thin. It really did change the texture of the meat fiber. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's very similar to, you know, on, on the fish end, this is what prosciutto would look like if you cured a prosciutto. Okay. The color is nice. It's still beautiful in the color, um, and um, you, uh, but you have that, that saltiness, you know, with prosciutto, um, and uh, mm. 
it's a, it's a little bit more of a, a chewier texture now. Um, and uh, it, I mean, and you could do so many things with this if you wanted to, um, you know, get a little fancy. You could make a... Uh, Are you making little roses? Little <laughs> rose, you know. Now, how is this traditionally served? Is When I hear of lox, I think of lox and bagels. Okay. Um, or like a Jewish tradition. Is that something you could do with this? Or is this a different form of lox that you serve differently? Classically, okay, uh, in the Nordic countries, they have either eaten this with a mustard sauce or boiled potatoes. But yes, in the USA, you can eat bagels and cream cheese. Um, you can make a mustard sauce. I actually used to take some of the liquid that was left in here, and then I would add a real um, deli-style mustard to it and some brown sugar because you still have the flavors of, of the fish and, and the oil and also have the saltiness so you wouldn't have to add any more salt with the deli style mustard and some brown sugar, that's the type of, and chopped dill, that's the type of mustard sauce they would eat with it. Did you have the um, kimchi you made from last episodes with this? Yeah, absolutely, why not? Uh, uh, you know, with some rice? And what with the rice, is, yeah. <laughs> make some really good bread, you can make a nice crostini uh, and uh, put, a, put some gravelots on the crostini and drizzle it with the mustard sauce. And some people can even eat it with classical garnish like you would with smoked salmon. Um, I would probably stay away from the capers only because the capers are salty, but you can do it with chopped egg white, maybe a uh, yolk and some chopped parsley. Um, but there's, there's so many different variations. And you just don't have to cure this with dill. Um, there's so many other things you can do with it. Some people put tequila in a marinade. Um, they do pastrami salmon, very similar. You cure it and you toast your black peppercorns and crush them and then you spread it all over your salmon. And that'd be like a pastrami style salmon. So there's a lot of different flavors that you can use and a lot of different ways you can cure. You can have several different flavors on your, um, you know, on your brunch and, and give a little an assortment platter of a tequila cured salmon, of a traditional gravelox, and you, you, even just a smoked salmon. Uh, it's so interesting to me to... I Oop, sorry. It's so interesting to, to see the texture of the fish change just by salt. Um, according to Chinese medicine, salt was used medicinally to um, soften hardness or dissipate uh, nodules. So it goes to speak to how seeing the texture change in the fish, how that would work in even our own bodies and how salt itself could have become um, a way to change the physical aspects of our body. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and if you think about it, it's a chemical reaction. Um, so when we think of salt and table salt, kosher salt, um, it's a sodium chloride. And you know, when we think about what the element is in the uh, chemistry point of view. And another way salt breaks things down is that a lot of people don't realize when you're eating something like kale or a really rough leafy green, if you add sea salt or coarse salt and massage it into the greens and let it sit for a few hours, it'll break down those leafy greens so they're more digestible. And that's the ideal mm -hmm. way to eat them is because otherwise they're too tough for our digestive system. Mm -hmm. So salt helps prepare um, other foods besides the meat, but vegetables as well, um, so that you can um, digest them better because it starts that process of breaking it down mm -hmm. and um, it can be really beneficial that way. Mm. And just a tip when you're doing this recipe as well, I normally, um, when I made this one, I did the equal parts of salt and, and sugar. Um, because of that so intense and drawing the air out, I would lessen the salt because I think it, it makes it a little bit too salty in something like that. If it was just a natural where where you're gonna lose some of the liquid and it's gonna spread on the pan. Where this one, it really, really incorporated. So I would probably do it, probably a 60-40 mix and do it with sugar. Mm -hmm. Patricia, you had a question. I did, I two questions. Oh, am I on mute? Oh, no, no, I'm working it. Um, <laughs> I, my question was, um, you said you marinate, you, you um, ma I guess marinated, right? Is that, the, or, or cured, cured for, for 48 hours or 24 hours? I, I did this one 48 hours. 48 hours. And if you go beyond that, what happens to the fish? Well, what happens is more of the oils come out, the fish becomes drier, okay? Mm -hmm. And it becomes more candy-like. 
which is fine as well if that's the way you want to serve it. Now, I've had salmon candy, which I found delicious. <laughs> delicious. So, yes, that is really good. So I guess if you wanted to go beyond the Gravelox, if you did um, like a four-day um, fermentation, that would because I, I noticed the salmon candy's kind of got a more of a brown texture. Is that just from the what they're using, or is that from the fermentation? Probably, probably a brown sugar as well, and also the, the fish will get a little darker because it's in the air or in salt. Gotcha. For a longer period of time, but you would have to adjust the sugar and the salt on that because if you want that more sugary flavor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Delicious. Delicious. So an interesting thing, um, first of all, fun fact, I found out in my research that the word salary actually comes from the word salt because they used to use salt as a way of paying Roman soldiers to be in the army. So that's really fun. Yeah. Uh, You're worth salt, right? The, the, yeah, your worth of salt. Um, the other thing is, uh, interestingly, um, dill, uh, which is traditionally used in Gravelox, um, it, its herbal medicinal qualities actually address some of um, the same issues with uh, salt. It was traditionally used to um, lessen uh, uh, genital urethral infections, so like bladder pain or, or uh, UTIs. Um, it was also used for digestion, right? Um, abdominal distension, which usually meant that, you know, things need to move out, right? So again, that combination of the dill and the salt to dissolve accumulations so that things can settle and move out was there. Um, dill is also uh, used uh, traditionally for inflammation. So you would actually uh, use dill as a poultice on areas of hot, hard masses. So it's interesting that the salt and the dill have very similar sort of medicinal um, qualities uh, and that they married so well also in flavors. Uh, we were talking about how in uh, at our last episode, how nature really does have these wonderful um, uh, resonances with each other to sort of enhance um, its gifts. Mm -hmm. But also uh, on salt as well, don't forget when they went out, uh, you know, in these Nordic countries and how they came up with it. You know, a lot of them were fishermen by trade. If they brought back an influx of salmon, this was a way to preserve it as well. You could, it wouldn't go bad. So their catch wouldn't go bad if they couldn't sell it or if they couldn't finish it themselves. This was the way to preserve it. And salt a good um, mineral to preserve meat and fish with. Mm -hmm. It looks so delicious. I wish I could have them right now. It's really making my mouth water. I know. <laughs> and what's great about this recipe is that um, we need a, a nice natural version of salt in our diet. Um, salt actually naturally is found in things like seafood. So the fish already has some natural salt, sodium in there. Um, also meats are higher in a salt content. Um, eggs, dairy, and a lot of vegetables have a natural small amount of salt. Um, we don't need a lot of salt in our diet, but we do need an equal, a nice balance of salt. And unfortunately, most people are getting salt through processed foods, things like salty chips and crackers and pizzas and things where they add so much salt, there's like nothing else you can taste. It really overpowers you. But one of the reasons we're so almost addicted to salt in our culture is because it is such a, a, an essential element. And so you go back to more of our traditional ways of eating salt was something we searched for because it wasn't easy to find when you're hunting and gathering you know um, as it is today so it is something that we crave naturally but we want to find the most um, healthy versions of salt so getting it naturally through food and then using um, as chef has said the least processed versions of the salt the kosher salt himalayan pink salt and sea salt are going to be ways that you're getting the most natural form of salt and also has trace amounts of other minerals and healthy things in there still sorry well i was going to say i had a question about himalayan pink salt um i find that it is because it doesn't have a strong salty taste to it, I use more of it trying to get that. Is that negate 
the healthy aspects of it or am I, it's just, it just lower in sodium than say kosher salt or regular most, white salt. Most likely it's because it's unrefined. And as you refine the salt, they're making it saltier. It's kind of like sugar, sugar from sugar mm. cane is less salty. And then they refine it down to the most high carbohydrate form. And I don't know exactly for salt, but that would be my um, guess is that the Himalayan salt is coming straight from the, um, the mining of the salt. So there's other things still in there that hasn't been pulled away to only give you that salt flavor. Sure. Versus the white salt has been pulled away all the other elements. Maybe there's some water or other things in there that they refine it down to. But the good thing is if um, you're salting your own food, it's really hard to get too much salt. Um, at that point. And it's really things that add salt um, in a process form where it's just dousing things with salt that you're going to go into the too high level. Um, in that, I think I have it here, the four um, health benefits, the RDA for salt is about a teaspoon of salt daily. And if you think about a visual teaspoon of salt, that's a lot of salt. Yeah. And if you're mixing it around into your food um, and sprinkling it in or, you know, putting it on there, um, it's really hard to get that much. And that's in, in a baseline. If you're working out, if you're running, if you're um, doing anything that's um, very strenuous, you're gonna need more salt because mm. your fluids are flushing it through the system. So um, that's gonna go up for people who are more active. Gotcha. So Lee, then, just to show you what I did was I just took a piece of gravel. I don't know if you can see this. Uh huh. Oh, you put the kimchi in the middle. We wrap the kimchi in it and cut it as a little hors d'oeuvre, so it can be a little bite-sized hors d'oeuvre for your guests when they come over. And you'll have that pungentness of the kimchi with, and and the heat from the kimchi. Okay, we'll also take away a little bit from the saltiness of this of the salmon. So therefore, it'll it'll blend. It, it goes quite well together. Now my mouth is really watery. <laughs> I think I might just drive over to your house. <laughs> Come on over. I have another jar of kimchi in there, and we have some gravel. So I can hand it off to you as you drive by. Woohoo! Um, this was such a really fun and easy way to sort of um, talk about salt and, you know, its importance in our daily lives and uh, and just it's important in our survival as humans. Uh, because of its ability to cure, uh, enhance food, but also give us life to maintain our own uh, internal functions. Um, and this is such a simple way to enjoy it. You know, no muss, no fuss. I think in right now, while we're all quarantining and we're all getting sick of cooking, <laughs> what a great way to just do something so simple, right? And you can do this with your kids. It's not very hard to mix up the ingredients ingredients and then and pat it all down in the fish and watch the science of it correct That's absolutely um, it's, it's such i easy. hope uh our viewers our audience out there who are watching this they can take this away as a really great science project for their kids well i'm certainly inspired i never thought i could make something like that now i'm tempted yesterday i made my my first batch of homemade mayo because i ran out of mayo and i <laughs> And I, had to, I did it on the fly, so hopefully I don't get salmonella poisoning. But <laughs> <laughs> turned out okay. Well, I, I think the vinegar, the pH factor in the vinegar kind of balances off. They do want you to use uh, pasteurized eggs when you make mayonnaise, only because you're feeding the public. You should be fine. And again, this, this is what's so exciting about having something like this is that, you know, we have this time to explore cooking, you know, in its simplest form. Um, and so it's very exciting to watch cut this beautiful piece of salmon that, you know, I'm just mesmerized by the color of it. And the Wait, Bill, where are you again? Yeah, Long Island today. I'll pick you up. Oh, darn it. <laughs> I was like, I'll walk up to where yeah. you are. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, well, Ashley, you're a little too far. <laughs> that's okay. Well, I love this because I know for me personally, um, as much as I love to bake, cooking is a little intimidating, especially cooking fish, because you find there's a very small window of when the fish is just right. And when you cook it, you can either overcook it or undercook it. And so that was yeah. always intimidating to me. So I'm going to send this to my brother who's obsessed with any kind of like new way of cooking. Um, and I know he'll do this with me. And my little niece who's three years old loves salmon. 
And so uh -huh. I'm really excited to try this and see what she thinks about it. And I think with that, like you said, that little bit of a candy coating and the little sugar on top, I think she will love it. So my goal this weekend is to give this a try and hopefully uh, let you guys know next week how it turns out. We'd love that. And I think, again, it'll be just so exciting to see the magic of it. You know, your niece will make it and she'll have to wait three days and then see how it's changed and what the taste is like. So, um, again. So we'd be really excited or totally forget that we did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, until you bring it out and then she's like, ooh, like, salmon. Oh, salmon. <laughs> a tip as well. When you come to the end of the salmon, if you can't get nice thin slices, there's something that's very traditional when you make with duck or pork, it's called a riette, okay? So you can kind of do an offshoot on the salmon and make a riette by just taking these nice little chunks of salmon, putting them in a food processor, okay? And then just hitting it with a, a little bit of oil and it'll bring it together, okay? You can actually spread that on a nice piece Oh of my oil. God, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you say, I'll pick you yeah. up in about an hour and then we'll drive over to Phil's house. I'm like, I haven't eaten breakfast yet because I went <laughs> shopping. And now I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, I'm in uh, mid in Murray Hill. Oh, okay. So you're in the heart of Manhattan. I did buy some fish this morning. I am making for the first time a cockle and razor clam fennel broth. Whoa, wow. wow. So Fancy. I um, saw the recipe and I was like, been wanting to make it for a couple of weeks, but I didn't you know like I'm um, as we all are on a strange schedule I went over to Italy to buy my fish because they always have such beautiful fish over there a um, little pricey but still knowing that it's fresh so I bought some cockles and razor clams and I am looking forward to that well, that's now delicious. that I'm watching this salmon <laughs> right it just it's just so it this is what I think we all miss but we were lucky to have is to still be able to gather around a table and, mm -hmm. yeah. and talk about food watch food you know have someone like you know chef Phil make us food though we can't eat it it's still just, you know, such a, a loving experience to watch yeah. someone prepare something for our, um, for us ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, I thank you, Chef, for uh, putting together this little episode for us and all of the other episodes we look forward to in the next couple of weeks. Um, and you. Ashley, thank you again for all of the wonderful information um, that you're providing us about the, what we're putting in our bodies. And Patrizia, pick you up in about 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ring the bell. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Phil. Thank you, Thank Chef you. Phil. Everybody. Thank you, ladies, it was a pleasure again. See you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Am I invited? <laughs> <laughs> you can come back. <laughs> Bye, Bye guys. Thank Bye. You. Bye.